Roughly 57% of new cars today come equipped with a turbocharger. And we're talking everything from inexpensive commuter cars to high-end luxury and sports cars and even a huge number of trucks and SUVs. But are turbocharged engines actually reliable? And how do they stack up against their naturally aspirated counterparts in terms of long-term dependability and repair costs? Is choosing a turbocharged car the obvious choice, or should you avoid buying a car with a turbo like it's the plague? Today, we're digging into the pros, the cons, and everything you need to know about turbocharged engines. Let's get into it. All right, first things first, what the heck is a turbocharger? <laughs> okay, picture this. Your engine is basically a big air pump, and the more air it moves, the more power it makes. A turbo uses the exhaust gases that your engine already produces and repurposes them to spin a turbine. That turbine forces more air into the engine, add a bit more fuel, and voila! you get more power. In essence, with a turbo, you can make something like a small 2-liter 4-cylinder make roughly the same power as, say, a commodity 4-liter V8. But more power is only part of the equation. Turbochargers are all about efficiency these days. But back in the day, turbos were one of the spiciest ingredients in the secret sauce for making cars faster. They were all about raw power and, honestly, a little bit terrifying. Fast forward to the 21st century, and turbos aren't just for racers and gearheads. Nope. Now they're in your daily driver, helping you get better fuel economy and performance. Turbos went from let's go fast to let's go fast efficiently. And now they're in everything from your mom's crossover to your best friend's souped up WRX. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some major drawbacks. So let's go through the good, the bad, and even the ugly of turbocharged cars. Okay, let's talk about why turbocharged engines rock. First up and most obvious is more power. Take the humble Honda Civic, for example. You know the one and a half liter optional turbo engine under the hood? That thing puts out more horsepower than some engines nearly twice its size. The naturally aspirated two liter option makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque and is capable of returning 33 miles to the gallon. Go for the smaller one and a half liter turbo though, and you're making 20 more horses and a respectable 40 extra pound feet of twist. And that's before you think about tuning and a Motec system exhaust. With an aftermarket engine calibration, most turbocharged engines are capable of producing between an additional 20 and 30% more power than in stock tune, without replacing any mechanical parts whatsoever. Of course, in most cases, that will void your warranty. And it does put extra stress on the engine, but more about that in a second. Using that Turbo Civic as an example, it gets 34 miles to the gallon making it both more powerful and more efficient than the 2-liter version. It's like having your cake and eating it too. See, when you're just cruising along, that little 1.5 liter uses less fuel. With smaller engines doing more work thanks to a turbo, you get better gas mileage. That's why manufacturers are all in on these tiny turbocharged engines. They're sipping fuel when you're cruising, but can still throw down when you put your foot down. And if all that isn't enough for you, turbochargers can actually help reduce emissions by improving the overall efficiency of an engine. For one, since a turbo forces more air into an engine's combustion chamber, we increase the likelihood of generating a more efficient and complete burn of the fuel, which not only cuts down on unburned hydrocarbons, but can reduce the amount of carbon monoxide coming out your tailpipe. Then there's the slight efficiency bump you get from using an engine with smaller displacement and a lower cylinder count. Smaller, lighter weight parts and less of them to spin means a lot of turbocharged engines benefit from lower friction and internal losses. They have a higher thermal efficiency because they recover and use exhaust energy which would otherwise be wasted. And since a lot of the time they're smaller in displacement than some of their naturally aspirated competition, they simply use less fuel when cruising. Lastly, you can't wrap up the pros of turbocharged engines without mentioning the fun factor. <laughs> Turbo engines can add a shot of adrenaline to your driving experience. The boost in power of a modern car with a turbo is nearly immediate and noticeable, making everything from merging onto the highway to passing cars more exciting. You also get that distinct turbo sound, that whoosh. That's music to any gearhead's ears. It's not just about speed. 
Turbos can make everyday driving more engaging, giving you more power when you need it, and making even a regular commute just a bit more fun. But it's not all good news, folks. Here's where things get tricky with turbos. See, in theory, turbochargers are pretty simple devices, but in the real world, when you slap a turbo on an engine, you're adding a lot of additional parts. There's the turbo itself, the wastegate, the diverter valves, extra piping for coolant and oil in the intercooler, plus additional sensors and solenoids to control everything. More parts means more things that can break, and when they do, it's usually expensive. Plus, there's the upfront cost involved with a turbocharged engine. I mean, all those parts cost money, and automakers, well, they're not exactly running a charity here. Then there's the thermal consequences to think about. Turbos run hot. They're basically spinning at hundreds of thousands of RPM, compressing air and dumping heat into your engine bay. All that heat can wear out gaskets, seals, and even the engine itself. It smells awful. Ford's EcoBoost engines, for example, have had issues with coolant leaks because the extra heat stresses the seals. Automakers have gotten pretty good about insulating the turbo from everything else around it, but still. A turbo equals more heat. More heat equals more potential for stuff to break. Then there's also the inherent added stress. Although most manufacturers build their turbocharged engines specifically to be turbocharged, a small engine that gets a bunch of extra air crammed down its throat doesn't exactly have the easiest life. And that extra stress is one of the reasons why so many modern turbocharged cars have problems with oil consumption. That extra cylinder pressure is hard on an engine's piston rings and can result in an engine just straight up wearing out sooner than one without a turbo might. Then there's the maintenance. If you're the kind of person who lets oil changes slide or ignores the check engine light, an engine with a turbo may not be your friend. They, even more than a regular engine, need proper maintenance and good quality oil that gets changed on time. Neglect them, and chances are your turbo could die an early death. And worst case scenario, take the entire engine out right along with it. Plus, in most cases, engines equipped with turbochargers are slightly more difficult to perform repairs on. Which means they not only have more components that are more often than not more expensive, but labor rates will be a bit higher too. Then there's the small caveat to the whole fuel economy thing. See, in EPA testing, where cars are driven under a strict set of conditions, fuel economy numbers usually look pretty favorable for turbocharged cars. In reality though, when under a heavy load, like if you're pulling a trailer or going up a mountain pass, more often than not, a turbocharged engine will actually consume more fuel than a larger, naturally aspirated one might. It was not by a whole lot, and you could always make the argument that vehicles that are turbocharged tend to get driven slightly more aggressively since getting into that boost is fun. But it is worth mentioning that unless you try and stay away from 50% throttle or more, most of those economy gains go right out the window. You've probably heard the horror stories. BMW's old twin-turbo V8's legendary power. But they're also legendary for costing you money. When the turbos are literally nestled inside the engine's V, you're basically cooking your engine's internals in turbo heat. It's like putting your entire engine in a microwave. Cute oil leaks, coolant leaks, and even full-on engine failure. Yikes. And it's not just BMW. Plenty of manufacturers have had their share of problems with turbocharged engines. Volkswagen, Kia, GM, Hyundai, and even Toyota have all faced issues. Ford's had problems with their EcoBoost, where the added heat from the turbos led to head gasket damage, which resulted in coolant leaks, engine damage, misfires, and in extreme cases, cracked cylinder heads. Not exactly confidence inspiring. Subaru has struggled with their turbocharged engines eating their own piston rings, and the list goes on. With that, not every turbocharged car is likely to give you headaches, but it's more important than ever to do your research on specific makes and models before considering making a purchase. All right, time for the million dollar question. Are turbocharged engines reliable? The answer, it depends. I know, classic, right? If you take care of your turbocharged engine, regular oil changes, letting the engine warm up gently, not driving like a maniac when it's cold, they can be just as reliable as a naturally aspirated one. Heck, I've seen turbo engines hit 200,000 plus miles without breaking a sweat. But, and this is a big but, if you're the kind of driver who neglects maintenance, or if you only ever drive short distances where the entire engine doesn't get time to warm up, then yeah, chances are, long term, you're gonna run into some issues. Most turbocharged engines don't like being rushed. They need time to heat up, time to cool down after being pushed hard, and they also need to be exercised every once in a while to keep things like excessive carbon at bay. So, 
Would I recommend a turbocharged engine? Well, absolutely. If you're the kind of person who keeps up with maintenance. If you're a set it and forget it type, maybe stick with a naturally aspirated engine. Fewer parts, less heat, and generally less hassle. But if you want that sweet combo of extra power and more efficiency, and you're willing to take care of it, or if you like the idea of one day tuning your car to make way more power for not that much money, turbos are where it's at. So what do you think? Are you team turbo or are you sticking with good old naturally aspirated engines? Let me know down in the comments below. And hey, if you liked this video, smash that like button and hit subscribe. You don't want to miss what's coming next. If you want to learn more about turbos, then head on over to our sister channel and go watch this Autolab video that explains things more in depth. Or maybe check out whatever YouTube thinks is best for you here. I'm Trav. Thank you all for watching. See you all next week right here on Ideal.